appeared to be a setup. Against doctor's orders, Tupac Shakur checked himself out of the hospital less than 24 hours after being shot five times on the way to a Manhattan recording studio. Tupac Shakur secures one clean legal victory this year as he is dismissed of assault charges brought against him when he allegedly shot at two off-duty Atlanta cops on Halloween last year. The case was dismissed due to insufficient evidence. More controversy surrounding Tupac Shakur. Meanwhile, in Tupac News... He was one of the most successful rappers ever to make it out of the ghetto. But the hood would never travel far from his mind and heart. It was what he knew and loved, and would eventually become the foundation of his raps and his rage. Born to Athena Shakur, a Black Panther, Tupac never knew who his father was. The reality, he says, often left him feeling empty and unmanly. Tupac the child grew up on the streets of New York, but Tupac the artist was really born in Maryland at the Baltimore School for the Arts. It was there that he wrote his first rap and discovered his love for acting. He couldn't have known it at the time, but this school was the first step of his ladder of success, and teachers felt something was special about Tupac. The school is, is, is sad that, uh, that he died. And that died in such a, a, a violent way. Um, but it's, it does say something from our point of view that he, we thought of him as, as, as an artist. Tupac never graduated from the school. After his junior year at 17, he moved with his family to a suburb of Oakland, California, a high school dropout. He says that's when he got off one track and onto the one that would dominate the remaining years of his life, what he called the thug life and one he learned all too well. The guns, the drugs, the positives of toughness and street smarts. He lived that life, and when he started recording, built his career on these images, ones which the inner city cheered, but white America feared. He was only 25 years old when he died, but his influence will live on for years to come, because Tupac Shakur brought light to the hidden darkness of the ghetto, its people and lifestyle. Although he made it out, he never forgot his friends he left behind. And that's his true legacy. Fans will forever remember about him. Let's talk a little bit about what happened to you when you were growing up. Uh, your parents were in the Black Panther Party. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like their job. Yeah, it was my mother was, a, was in the Black Panther Party. She was like at a high position, which mm -hmm. was like unheard of. Because, of course, there was sexism, even in the Panthers. Mm -hmm. So, and my stepfather at the time, Matu Shakur, he was also like a well-known, like, revolutionary. True. All, my, all of my roots to the struggle are real deep. Mm -hmm. And then, my godfather, Geronimo Pratt, you know, he was like, had a, a top official rank position with the Panthers on the West Coast. Right. And we just mentioned he's, of course, serving a life sentence right now. Yeah. Your mom was carrying you when she went to jail. Indeed. the first time yes, uh, that's a very interesting story in itself what happened to her why was she in jail because like you know there's racism so when the Panthers hit the government panicked and they had a thing called a coin pro and they felt like the Panthers were detrimental to American society so they raided every Panthers house especially the ones who they felt like could do the most damage as an orator mm -hmm. so my mother was nine months pregnant you know seven months pregnant they put a match to the door and said, fire, fire. And you know, it's like five in the morning. So my mother opened the door and they just burst in, put a shotgun to her pregnant belly and put a gun to her head and said, don't move. Bye, bye, bye. They said, you're under arrest. What does it do to a young man like yourself, though, when all of your heroes, your mother, your father, who has passed away, he, had, he was incarcerated as yes, well, uh, your, your godfather, all of your heroes, have been to jail. And they weren't all Panthers. My father was a, I mean, my stepfather was a Panther. My father was a gangster, a straight up ignorant, you know, hustler. Mm -hmm. But he made, but he loved the fact that the Panthers, what he told, my mother told me is that it was a one night stand. But he loved the fact that the Panthers would go to jail and wouldn't snitch. Hmm. They were true to each other, you know, as women, it was men. And that was a one night stand. That's how I came to be, you hmm. know, out of the love for black people. So that's how I got to live, and that's how I have to die. And that's how my music has to be, and my acting, and my producing, and my interviews, everything has yeah. to be for the love of black people. I put my heart into my music. I want to be the realest artist ever, ever. I want everybody to talk about Tupac. He was the realest artist ever. He never sold out. He stayed the same. They couldn't stop him. They couldn't change him. Everything I ever 
say, whether it's good or bad, it's coming from my heart. Yeah. And if it's wrong, then, you know, God ain't finished with yeah. him yet. Let him check me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to say it as it comes from my heart because that's what we need. Obviously, when, you know, I see, I seen all of that. I seen the, the, the crack babies, all of that. So nothing America can show me, nothing these critics, nothing nobody can show me can back me down. The only thing I have is my heart. You know what I mean? Don't take that. My heart, my, my dignity, and my honor. That's all I got. That's Tupac. Don't take that from me. Ain't nobody taking nothing from me. Them dudes that took the jury, all of that was insured. I got more now. Everything that they took, I got back. But better. You know what I mean? Everything. If I crash my, my car, I got a new car. Somebody take something from me, I'm getting something else. I'm a survivor forever. I will never stop. Until God take me up off of this, I'm going to always move forward. I will always be here. Until somebody take me off this planet, I'm going to always move forward. I ain't no quitter. Can't nobody stop me. We're outside the University Medical Center trauma unit here in Las Vegas where Tupac Shakur remains in critical condition since Saturday night. Doctors say he faces long odds against surviving the ambush that cut him down. BET has exclusive footage of Shakur and his entourage immediately following the Tyson Seldon fight on Saturday. Notice his comment as he passes our camera. Everybody go to jail, come out, they got good luck. And within hours, his luck ran out. Mary and Chuck Knight, chairman of Death Row Records, and Tupac Shakur were on their way to this club, 662, at the time of the shooting. Police say at least 13 rounds were fired at Shakur. Four bullets made contact. He was then rushed to the trauma center at the University Medical Center in Las Vegas. Friends and family remain vigilant at this point and prayerful. I spoke with Ms. Shakur earlier today. He said to tell everyone the family is doing fine, but of course it's far too emotional at this point for them to appear on camera. Earlier Friday, family and friends came and went, no one knowing what was to come. It was about 5 or 4 Pacific time when I received a page saying that he had been rushed to surgery and his condition was code, meaning no vital signs. At 4.03, he was pronounced dead. There was frustration from his brothers and friends, angry, hurt, and confused. Glad to see a lot of people coming around, let you know he was loved. That all the player haters on saying that, you know, this, I guess this is what the gang people was wishing for. They was all talking about he died and stuff. Within minutes, almost magically, cars of fans continued to appear around the medical center. Many had heard of his death on a local radio station. You were one of the first people to show up here today. How did you hear about it and what did you hear? I was listening to the local radio station and, uh, and they announced that he passed at 4.15 uh, our time here in Las Vegas. Uh, I was riding and I was devastated, you know, because it's been a matter of six days and I really thought he was gonna pull through. I was devastated. Mrs. Shakur, shielded by family, was rushed away. At about 6 p.m., Suge Knight, the outlaws, and Danny Boy arrived at the hospital only to leave within minutes, finding that the body had been taken to the coroner's office. And late into the night, fans held a candlelight vigil, praying for Tupac's soul and for the goodness of his family. Basically, we want people to know that we did love Tupac very much through all of his aspects, through his thugging, through his knowledgeable time, through his dear mama period, through his keep your head up period when he was telling black women, be strong, because right now with the interracial dating that is going on, which I'm not gonna trip on it, but <laughs> we fighting for our black men. What's up, Rap City? We thugging it, you heard me? It's my boy birthday, Tupac. It's going down right here on BT. The hate you gave, little infant, T-H-U-G-L-I-F-E. The hate you gave, little infant, E-C-K, everybody. Meaning, what you feed us as seeds grows and blows up in your face. That's thug life. I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making me. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. There is no mercy on these streets. It's only you, and you can only achieve what you desire and what you see yourself grabbing. There's no, nobody will help you make your dreams come true. You out there by yourself. I don't care what they tell you about black, white, Mexican, you out there by yourself. Tonight I see the fans are wild for you. What's it been like? It's cool. No problem. 
has it has it been difficult, easy? It's cool. It's all good. It's something that happens all the time. You know, I'm always in the streets. This ain't nothing new. On, on location every day. So it's all good. It's all good. Tupac, are you focusing now more on Tupac? The fight and talking about location. Should I shoot that? Mm -hmm. No. Might as well. You talking about location? Look. Get back, guys. Okay. What are they fighting about? What's up, man? All right. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, we hope they will uh, get over this fight. Um, <laughs> I <you> missed it. <laughs> to me, it's like, um, it is my sensitive side that, um, that likes to blow up the hard side. Because if my, if I can, if my image or my reputation can stop a confrontation before it happens, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? I know how it is day to day. It's a constant um, man ego check going on in this street, in this world. So part of that is just like, you know, that's my, that's my, my resume. But as far as the media, they look at it as something different. They don't care about my resume. They don't care about me not getting in trouble. It's just another story, you know, and it's, it's a real story. They don't have to pay for it, and they're going to milk it for all it's worth. As far as people, they want me when they first see me to humble myself. They want me to be like this and da da just because they're scared of me. But I don't feel like that's my job, to humble myself to show you that I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat, unless you're a threat to me. Critics say, yeah, but you're being pimped. You're being pimped by the record, record executives who will allow you to do your thug life because it portrays a certain black. I mean, you've heard it, yeah. that if you were just a singer, you wouldn't have the same record contracts you have. Right. But because you portray the thug life, the gangster rap, they've allowed you to make that money. They've allowed you to push and make your platinum. I beg to differ. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting pimped. That's true. But um, just like how a, how a woman would be, you know what I'm saying? Anybody would be pimped. You know, it's like, it's not that you get pimped. It's how long you get pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because if you really look at this situation, it is not I who's being pimped. When you look at the white kids with Raiders hats on, it's the white folks getting pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm making their future. I'm writing down their curriculum. Right now, what I write in my album today, when it comes out in two months, that's what white kids is doing. So who really is getting pimped? I'll be, I'll be, I'll, what I'm writing in my raps is what the white kids are going to be saying to their mamas and daddies when they come home. Who is getting pimped? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a high school dropout. You know what I'm saying? As far as my teacher told me when I was in high school, I ain't going to be... You know what I'm saying? I just gotta, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. <laughs> you know, everybody's getting pimped. Whether you work a nine to five or whether you work for yourself, you're getting pimped by somebody. You would be amazed at how many times I don't get a chance to just tell my side. And my side is always more interesting because when I tell you my side, you're gonna see how hard the other side works for their side to come out. You see, Shakur is also a young man in trouble with the law. He faces numerous charges across the country. Among his legal woes, he served time in jail for assaulting a movie director that fired him from a project. He's apologized for that one. He's been involved in a shooting incident with an off-duty police officer. I had no record all my life, okay? No record, no police record, until I made a record. As my video was debuting on MTV, I was behind bars getting beat up by the police department. I got a $10 million lawsuit. They, they said they would settle with me and everything. You know what I'm saying? But nobody cared about that. That one blew up all in the news. In they Oakland. didn't see me. They did not see me on TV with my eye busted, my head busted. There's pictures of those. In Oakland, you don't, you're talking Yes, about. in Oakland. You don't see them pictures. You see pictures of Tupac coming out of jail and cuffed. You don't see pictures of the police standing over me beating my brains in. You don't see that. But I see that. All of this is... Scars I go to my grave with. I can't these see. These are learned to be a scar. That's what Who these did do. that to you? Oakland Police Department. All above my eye, all of that. Why? And I pay their salary because I was a, a outspoken young black man. They were sweating me for jaywalking. You were jaywalking. Jay and they stopped you. And I swear to you, I don't even know what jaywalking is. Didn't until they beat me down for it. They stopped me. They asked me for my ID. My real name is Tupac Shakur. There's nothing fake about me. There's no stage name or stage aura. That's my name, and that's how I said it. My name is Tupac Shakur. Just because my name wasn't John Brown, it irked them. 
So they started, you know, saying, well, what your mother name you that for, blah, blah. So I got hot. That, that was beyond the call of duty. So yeah. I was like, give me my citation. Let me go about my business. And I said the words that N.W.A. made famous. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So that got him too high. He couldn't stand to see a, a young black male tell him. So they put their hands on him. In October, he faces trial on charges of sodomy. The little rape charge and all that, I was with him when he was doing above the rim. There's people in the street, ah, hi, ah, you got caught out there, whatever. Yo, that, that hurt him. That cut, that cut him. That cut him down. I'm not guilty. People should look me in my eyes. They should look me in my eyes. And anybody that thinks I've committed that rape should go get Brenda's Got a Baby and keep your head up and listen to him thoroughly. It was hard to imagine that it you would be, do that. It shouldn't be nothing for, it should not even be to me. I have no um, patience for anybody to doubt me. None. At all. It's too hard out here. You know what I'm saying? If my people don't stand up for me, who is? I understand these white folks looking at me like that because they don't know me. They didn't hear keep your head up. That ain't no fluke. You know, keep your head up ain't no goddamn uh, come up. I didn't do that for my to be smiling in my face and say, oh, he's cool. I did that from my heart. So that if they do try to put a rape charge on me, my sisters could say he ain't out there. Now, if my sisters can't say that, you won't hear another keep your head up out my mouth. I cannot die with people thinking I'm a rapist or a criminal. I can't leave until this is straight. You know, I'm not suicidal. I'm not, I can't go until y'all really know what time it is. And then after that, boom, it's all over. And we can see, you know, how this shit fall. But that's how it is. And the reason being is because if I can't live free, if I can't live with the same respect as the next man, I don't want to be here. I got shot a whole bunch of times. I went to jail for a whole bunch of months. And it's just a learning experience. Yeah. You know, I wish I could say more about it, but it's just like a learning experience. You learn everything you learn from. So from that, I learned a lot. I learned humility. I learned patience. And I learned uh, forgiveness. You get duped in the butt. <laughs> you know why it was difficult for me? Not that somebody said I got raped in jail. It was difficult because people was believing it. I was like, how the hell y'all gonna believe I got raped in jail? They pulled two guns on me and told me to get on the floor. And I wouldn't get on the floor for with two guns. What makes you think I'm gonna go to jail? With no guns, it's gonna make me turn over and give up my whole manhood. It didn't make sense, you know what I mean? Only thing I have is my heart, you know what I mean? Don't take that, my heart, my, my dignity, and my honor, that's all I got. It's kind of hypocritical because people love to, you know, have mercy and sympathy for everything from the animals to the whales to fur to everything except us, your youth, the ones who you give no attention to, who become adults with no compassion, you know what I mean? And I feel like if you walk by a street and you was walking on concrete and you saw a rose growing out of concrete, even if it had messed up petals and it was a little, you know, to the side, you would marvel at just seeing a rose grow through concrete. So why is it that when you see some ghetto kid grow out of all of the dirtiest circumstances and he can talk and he can sit across and you make you smile, make you cry, make you laugh, all you can talk about is my dirty roads, my dirty stems, and how I'm leaning crooked to the side. You can't even see that I came up out of that shit. And that's exactly the analogy that it is for me. What's up, BT? This is Master P, and I'm kicking it on Rap City. You're watching the Tupac birthday special, and it's going down right here. You heard me? Who the who? Yeah, I ain't married no more, though. It ain't work. I tried, though. I don't know what was going through his head, but all I know is that the next day, <laughs> it was something totally different. Jealousy on both our parts, I say, because I don't want to make it like a third fault. Jealousy for anybody. Now, you got the marriage annulled. Was that your idea or Tupac's idea, and why did you have an annulment? My lawyer said that it would be best for me because I was concerned with um, court cases and tax set, tax situations, so I just didn't want to be responsible for any of, you know, of so it was, being sued for anything. So you were afraid of his mounting debts and anything? I wouldn't say debts, but I just didn't want to be responsible for anything that, you know, that happened before me. My lifestyle is just real wicked. It takes a hell of a woman to be in this type of lifestyle with me. And I'm real demanding. I'm, I'm a hard person to love. But I love real hard, but I'm a hard person to love. What I liked about him is that our relationship, we didn't do, we didn't do our relationship for the people. 
We didn't go and say, look, we had to fight. Now look, with this club, are we doing this? We did it for me and him. We would go and just have fun and, and uh, we was real deep on a lot of stuff. I mean, real deep. We was at the point where we used to have conversations. And I said, you know what? I work hard at what I do. You work hard at what you do. We're a perfect team. And if something happened to go wrong and I'm not there, you know, you got to pick up the pace and make it happen. The guy I've sent Pac to the earth to do certain things, and he done. He represented us, not only me, I mean, people in general. And he probably did so much good and made so many things happen that it was time for him to make better things happen in heaven. And for us, me, maybe I got a lot of more stuff to do. The sad thing about it is a lot of people who Maybe really didn't know Tupac. Didn't know him to love him. They're trying to use this opportunity. If they're actor or actress who's forgotten about the business, they want to go and say, I'm attend some type of service and do something for Tupac. Don't try to use my homeboy to get back in the game. Or don't go out there and bootleg no T-shirts and keychains about Tupac where he don't get the money and sell them on the street. Don't, don't use, don't use him. I mean, that's, that's the part that's real, real sad how people try to do that. Don't turn his, him leaving here as to, into a circus. Pac is on the level of Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King. I mean, you see, they live forever. They got holidays. I mean, if we can't get a holiday, around the world, at least we can get one in my neighborhood for Tupac. I mean, we're just, you know, we'll celebrate, you know, his birthday every year. I guess God didn't find no replacement for Tupac yet. <laughs> as soon as God finds a replacement for Tupac, I'm gone, but until he do, I'll be here doing what he want me to do. Pac is a strong dude, yo. I know dude, you know what I'm saying? Right. He real strong. So when it was right. like he got shot, I was just more like, again? You know what I'm saying? He always getting shot or shot at. He gonna pull through this one again, make a few records about it, and it's gonna be over, you know what I'm saying? But when he when he died, I was just like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? It kind of took me by. I mean, even though we was going through our drama, I would never wish death on nobody, you know what I'm saying? Because ain't no coming back from that. When I sat in that prison cell up in uh, New York City, all I could think about was California and how much I love California and Sunset Boulevard and Crenshaw and Long Beach, everything just, oh man, the 101, the 110, everything. I just love California. Roscoe's, El Polo Loco, Taco Bell, everything. I love California. That's all I thought about. I used to have a homie send me pictures of just California, just the streets and stuff. So um, when I came out and Dre had this beat in the song, I was like, this is the song for me, California Love. I want to show, I want to put California back on the map because the East Coast, like, like screaming out West, New York, New York, and they're kind of like disrespecting the West Coast. So I'm going to put it back down to the West Coast to show, like, we ain't really tripping off, you know, hip hop or really nothing, not me personally. I'm going to speak for myself. I don't care about hip hop and all of that. I'm a rapper. I'm just rapping. You know what I mean? To me, hip hop is being yourself, doing your own thing. I ain't trying to bring 1970 back. I'm trying to do it live right here in 1995, 96, 97. So California love is just for all my people in California, the West Coast in general. I love you. I love you. I love you. This is where I make my home at. This is where I love. I just love California. Out of bail, fresh out of jail, California dreaming. Soon as I step on the scene, I'm hearing the screaming. Fainting for money and alcohol for life of a West Side player with Calisai and a strong ball. I kind of realized how powerful Tupac and I was, you know what I'm saying, because we two individual people, we waged a coastal beat, you know what I'm saying, one man against one man made a whole west coast hate a whole east coast and vice versa, you know what I'm saying, and that really bugged me out, like yo, 
Duke don't like me, so this whole coast don't like me. You know what I'm saying? I don't like him, so my whole coast don't like him. It just kind of let me know how much strength I had. So what I'm trying to do now, you know what I'm saying, with his un untimely demise or whatever, I got to be the one to flip it and take my, my power and flip it like, yo, it got to be dead, you know what I'm saying, because he can't do that. You know what I'm saying? He can't be the one to be like, yo, I want to squash it because he's gone. So I got to take the weight on both sides. That's why I'm out here, you know what I'm saying? We hitting him. When I was pro What's up, Rap City? It's Master P, and we've been chilling in the house all day. We still thugging. It's my boy birthday, Tupac. It's going down. I'm going to say all right, P, to the homie. Today is his day, and we're going to make a big thing of it because uh, he represented real hip-hop, and he put a lot of big records out. It's so sad that he ain't here on his birthday, but we're going to represent you. Heard me? No Limit style. Hootie hoo! Get the ground beneath your feet, partner. Get the wind behind your back and go out in the blaze if you got to. Otherwise, you might as well be dead your damn self. I have a whole energy that represents not just black youth, but white youth, Mexican youth, youth. You know what I'm saying? That, that, um, that change right before you go from being 18 and unresponsible to when you go to being like 21, 22, and the whole world's on your shoulders. Um, I, I believe strongly that um, my audience empathize with me because I show that side, I show that emotion raw, uncut, good and bad. And so I think I can bring that um, more funnel, more um, directed into screenplays, more albums, producing, managing, you know what I'm saying? If I can um, figure out just how to control it, I can, uh, I can use it on a lot of different levels. In fact, it is that raw, uncut energy that Shakur brings to entertaining that has won him a legion of fans. I wondered how he's handling this pretty heady stuff at the tender age of 23. Filmed on location in New York City, Bullet is gritty and as realistic as it gets. Mickey Rourke stars as Butch Bullet Stein, a tough convict just released from prison. He's lost everything to drugs and violence. Bullet double crosses a powerful drug dealer called Tank, played by Tupac Shakur. He's a shot caller. Uh, he runs things in his neighborhood. Uh, he's not your local drug dealer. He's not that. He's more of an entrepreneur. He's trying to, you know, be a mob figure, you know. Tupac Shakur is back on the silver screen as the character's spoon in the new movie, Gridlock. I know for a fact that the part was written for an older person, and that's how he explained it to me. And I um, pushed the issue that I believe that I could handle it. And I believe that um, for me to be the nurturing character, the, the nurturing guy that this character was, for me to be the, uh, the wiser and the more reasonable and the more logical, did not mean that I had to be the older character. But then came the final okay to hire Tupac from actor, writer, and first-time film director, Bondi Curtis Hall. Early on, we had thought about some other actors for the, can for, for, for the role of Spoon, and, you know, now I can't imagine any other actor uh, doing this role. You know, he's so great in it. And what's the movie about? I'm scared to tell people it's a comedy because they're going to go, like, with their laughing meter. If you go just ready to watch a dramatic piece, it'll be a comedy. Because it's very funny. It takes some serious issues and just shows the comedy in our own lives. Tupac co-stars opposite British actor Tim Roth. Tupac's character is the more down-to-earth one. It keeps me kind of in, in control. Okay, that was close. That was way too close. We lost it. Tim's a great actor, Tim Roth. So it's a challenge to work beside a great actor. And I like the camaraderie between the two characters, Tim's character and mine. And will his career as a rapper take a backseat to his acting career? When it's acting, nobody comes up and goes, you're supposed to be a role model, why did you do that part? But when I'm rapping and I tell these different sides, it's like, I got the fate of the whole young black nation on my shoulders, and I really can't take that. It's not worth it. For Screen Scene, I'm Sheila Frazier. How you doing? You want my autograph? No, nah, you, nah, you want my autograph? This is my nephew, y'all, John Singleton. Y'all didn't know that, but yeah, it was nepotism. I got him in the movie. This is my nephew, John. Don't you How y'all doing? See? How y'all doing? We got a regular family reunion going on here. Hold up, y'all. Wait a minute. Somebody looking at me crazy. 
Hey, what's up then? Well, do what you gotta do, man. See how you looking at me? See how that go? You just be walking, somebody just start looking at you, me, mugger, you know what I'm saying? Like you playing me or something, you know? Now I can keep walking or I can confront that man. I think I'm gonna keep walking, you know? I don't know what he got with him, you know what I'm saying? He got some people with him. I'll catch you later, man. Don't go nowhere by yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Don't go nowhere by yourself, man. You don't know they size, because they, you know, out of nowhere, they can do anything. It's them little, I'm telling you. That's who be starting it at the club, closing the club. It's be little like that, just like that. Y'all watch out for him. Y'all my witness. You ever read Eat to Live? No. I'm serious, you gotta, you know, read it. You ever read Do or Die? Which one? That gang book. Yeah, I read that, I read yeah. that. But I'm talking about, you know, eating, eating right, you know what I'm saying? Eat but right. it's too much Eat right, be it right. You know what I'm saying? Like Whatever you eat is what you eat, what you are. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you eat hot dog, hot dogs like beef, they take, they take the hearts, they take the entrails, everything, of the, the, the cow and the legs, and they put it in, and that becomes part of you. But what kill me is everybody be talking about that nature, all of that, but y'all don't know that somebody ain't peeing on all them greens y'all eating, peeing on all them vegetables y'all eating, and y'all swear you healthy. You know, somebody, a cow vegetables, and that's better than you eating meat. But, but with meat, with meat though, meat is like, you know what I'm saying, that stuff is like, it ain't good, man. It ain't right, good for you, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know? It's a lot of stuff that ain't good for me though. It ain't good for me to get shot in the club. It ain't good for me to be hanging out on this block. I mean, but you gotta take your chances, you know? Nobody wanna live forever. I think that my mother, like a lot of people, like a lot of them, like, Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, uh, Harriet Tubman, they felt like they were laying tracks for the, the, the generation to come. I, I think my mother knew that freedom wouldn't come in her lifetime, just like I know that it won't come in mine. Hmm. But it's a matter of either we stay like this or somebody sacrifices, somebody laid a track so we don't stay in a 360 degree deadly circle. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Somebody has to break out and risk, you know, losing everything and being poor and getting beat down, but somebody has to do something. Had I had a father, had I had some of these opportunities, I'd have been able to help my mother more. She wouldn't have went the road she went. I could have been a better son, you know what I'm saying? She wouldn't have went that road. It was the absence of my father, you know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with him being daddy not being there. My mother's dealing with him being my man not being there. You know, so many problems in our community that, that um, affect everything. So by me not having that, I ain't never want to hear nothing about no kind of relationships between a black man and a black woman. I knew they didn't work. Because as far as I knew, my daddy was the coolest dude out there. And my mama was a panther. So if they didn't work, it don't work. That's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And going out there, you know what I'm saying? It's like watching my mother just go through changes and everything. It's like my mother's my partner. She a soldier. You know, she a soldier like I'm a soldier. You know, and I, I watched the, the peak the game that she went through. If I, I would have went the same way my mother went had not she did her route and showed me which, where it went wrong with her. One of the things I've always wanted to ask you was that song, Dear Mama, as you know, was a huge hit for Tupac, one of his uh, greatest hits of all time. I'm wondering uh, what your thoughts were about that song. That song was a very honest song, as you well know. It put in, in large measure, put a, a great portion of your life out front in the lyrics of the song for those who didn't know much about you. What are your thoughts about that song specifically and, and, the, and the lyrics? Well, actually, I think that the wonderful thing about that song is that that song is something that I share with millions probably of women across this country and probably across the world I would think you know and it's a gift it's a gift from Tupac to women who've maybe not been perfect who's, who've made mistakes but who've been good mothers you know and I think that as I said earlier Tupac spoke really eloquently um, about the reality of our lives perhaps you know we didn't have I didn't have the life that every viewer that you have you have has but I'm sure that a lot of your viewers have shared some of the problems that I've had and also share the joy of getting around and through and over those problems and that's basically what that song is about it's a celebration of black mothers or a celebration really of mothers because a lot of white and Asian and Hispanic mothers 
have also related to that song and so have their children. So I think that that song is a universal declaration of love for mothers who've done the best that they could with what they've had to work with. But I want to talk about something else, though. I want to talk about the people that don't have their mother no more. Because we all sometimes forget to appreciate our mother. But like my little homeboy Boots on, we don't got no mother today. While we all shed smiles of being happy, they can't be happy because they don't got no mother. Why, Danny Boy, you think all, for all y'all mama, Danny Boy out here making everybody feel good? He ain't got no mama to hug him. We got to get back to that old school. family um, I want to be financially secure and I want to be able to help a lot of people and I want to be able to change my community and I want to make my mark on the world Tupac was just he was just himself free to be him he didn't care what nobody had to say about him he was being himself he was a sweet person a kind person 
but nobody could change his mind about the lyrics he wanted to write or the image he wanted to portray. He was just the person he wanted to be. I'm focusing on changing the world, whatever I can do to achieve more, to be a better person, to make more money, and to get myself to a position in this business where I don't have to take as many orders, and I can give a few, and I can give back. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm setting out one lone young black male with the stack against the me against the world, with about 30 cases, they're all getting dropped, and then I'm gonna take the world over. Tupac was one of the first people to break Hollywood and do movies and whatever sell five million records it's hard for rap artists to do that especially with it being his third or fourth album i can't i, don't, I think it's his third album but what i'm saying it's hard to do your third album sell five million joints if you're in this rap game you know what i'm talking about you understand what i'm saying and it's hard to get in the movies and be a good actor at this you know what i'm saying i just think overall we lost one of the best artists in this little rap game it is i pray to god every night i still do that i just wanted um I wanted God to know that even though I was going through the worst of times, I still recognized it as being something greater than myself. And that I'm not going to give up my faith just because it's going bad for me. Because he was there when I was living good. So I just want him to know that, you know, that I'm not no punk, and I'm not soft-hearted. That when it gets bad, I'm going to be like, oh, I don't believe in God no more. I believe in God all the time, every day, all day. Good and bad, rough and hard, five shots, jail time, everything. Good time, million dollars, Benzes, all that. I always believe in God because he gave it all to me. The person I knew Tupac as, he was like very intelligent. And to me, like society and people who always talk bad about him had the wrong vision of what kind of person he really was. I mean, everybody has done crazy things before or get put off in the wrong situations with the wrong type of people and wrong surroundings. But he's not a bad person. To me, I think he had a lot of sense and he was very intelligent. I guess that's what's uh, frustrating and aggravating that I can't live down this big shadow that I made to protect myself because it started out as just being I need to get an alter ego to keep people away from me and to protect myself which everybody does you know like when somebody breaks into your house and you know he's in the house you wouldn't go in your real voice excuse me are you breaking the house? you would go hey what you doing malls it's the same thing that I do you know what I mean if you're out in the wilderness and I'm just one sheep by myself I wouldn't go. Um, I want to say my next song, um, it's called, uh, I would go, you know, woo, the world, you know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's worked, you know what I mean? And not that it's like a total facade, it's, it's, it's me, but it's just blown up. So when I first um, heard that Tupac was shot or then, and then like later on down the line, they said he had passed away, it was like real shocking, but I feel that what the Lord does is like, put things in front of you to show you like lessons. I mean, like it goes back to the e even the easy eat thing, you know what I'm saying? It's like, cause children, they look up and not just children, but like people our age, you know what I'm saying? They look up to the people that they see on the TV screen and what they hear. And I just think it was, um, it was a, it was a big lesson, you know? In retrospect, how would you say that your life has been? What would you say about your life? How would you define it? I would say it's been like, a test on my faith you know what I'm saying you know how I guess his name was Job in the mm -hmm. Bible who God just did all of this crazy stuff to him just to make sure his faith was straight and that's how it was it made me if I didn't have all of this stuff I don't think that my feet would have been so um, firm to where I could stand up for mm -hmm. anything you know and I would be um, less ready to deal with what's out there he's gonna be missed you know what I'm saying his music I mean, the way I knew him, he was a, a, a sentimental cat. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't as hardline as everybody presented him. He showed love to everybody he met. Mm -hmm. I don't care who they was, where they was from. East Coast, West Coast, wherever. You know what I mean? We had in, in more until I joined you. Damn, I wish they would have known how much you loved New York. And then after he passed, it was like I wish he would have seen how much New York loved him. Finally, I want to ask you about something that someone else asked you in the interview and I thought the answer was interesting because I think it speaks to you and your generation a lot. Someone said, where do you see Tupac 10 years from now? You said, hey, I just want to be alive. That's real for you. That's so real. I, can't, I, ma I made a metamorphosis. I'm a new person today because I used to strongly and honestly, honestly, I feel like I could represent my generation, generation so much because I honestly did not care whether I lived or died. But now I cannot die people thinking I'm a rapist or a criminal. I can't leave until this is straight. 
You know, I'm not suicidal. I'm not, I can't go until y'all really know what time it is. And then after that, boom, it's all over. And we can see, you know, how this shit fall. But that's how it is. And the reason being is because if I can't live free, if I can't live with the same respect as the next man, I don't want to be here. Because God has cursed me to see what life should be like. If God wanted me to be this person and be happy here, he wouldn't let me feel so oppressed. He wouldn't let me feel so trampled on. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't let me think the things I think. So I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Just because I don't have nothing to pass around for people to put money in the bucket don't mean I ain't doing God's work. I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Because these ghetto kids ain't God's children. And I don't see no missionaries coming through there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing God's work. While Rev Reverend Jackson do his shit up in the middle class and he go to the White House and have dinner and pray over the president, I'm up in the hood, you know what I'm saying, doing my work with my fucks. And just because I don't live there don't mean I don't go there. I got to go there because I can't hang nowhere else.